So it's great to be here. I couldn't be more excited to have this panel. I think it's a perfect representation of what's happening in our space. TradFi and on-chain merging together. We have here two great teams. We have, well, two great institutions, two great companies being represented. Dinari, SNP Global, thank you for being here. So I would like to start the panel by asking you a simple question. Please introduce yourself and tell us what are you doing today in the world of tokenization? So Dinar is a tokenization platform. We've focused primarily on US stocks and ETFs and interesting index products, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, we work in 85% or excuse me, 85 jurisdictions so far, and we focus really on three things. So one is shareholder rights, preserving those through the token. Two is compliance and compatibility with existing financial uh, infrastructure. And the third is scalability, so that we can eventually bring capital markets on chain uh, in a much bigger way than we've seen so far. Yes. So um, Mike Orzano from S&P Dow Jones Indices. Um, many of you know us. We're the world's largest index provider. Um, we've, uh, you know, made a made a big kind of strategic push to. Um, you know, to be involved in tokenization. Um, earlier this year, we um, brought the S&P 500 on chain. Um, now we're working on, you know, crypto indices and bringing, um, you know, other types of, of indexes on chain. So, you know, we're a big believer that, you know, capital markets are moving on chain and indexes are, you know, a critical part of the financial infrastructure and um, need to be on chain as well in order to support um, kind of the whole, you know, financial ecosystem. Perfect. So I think the main product that's being worked on right now is the S&P Digital Market 50. Maybe you can tell us a bit more around the product and what it enables on chain. Um, sure, I can, I can start with that. So yeah, we're very excited about uh, this new index, the S&P Digital Markets 50. Um, the idea behind it is that you know, it, it essentially captures uh, like the full um, crypto ecosystem in one package. So it's 50 constituents. It includes 15, the largest 15 cryptocurrencies and then also 35 crypto-oriented equities. Um, you know, we know a lot of, uh, you know, the investments in, in crypto these days are really sort of single assets, right? Like people are investing in Bitcoin, maybe there's some dabbling in Ethereum. Um, but we think as the ecosystem matures, um, you know, rather than, you know, making co concentrated bets in, you know, single, single assets, it makes a lot of sense to look at it from you know, the broader, broader perspective. Um, you know, it's much less risky and a way to capture kind of the full um, ecosystem, the growth of the full ecosystem um, in, in, in one package. Perfect. So we are witnessing the start of tokenization, right? The world is getting tokenized more and more. I'd be keen to understand from your point of views, why are we starting with equities, with indexes, why are those the starting points for the tokenization that's happening right now? And why are those the perfect products to have on chain today? Yeah, I think this is a, it's part of an evolution, right? You, you, you saw stable coins rise and, you know, the demand for stable coins. And you saw people looking at uh, trying to get yield on, so, you know, you see these treasuries backed products took off. It sort of makes sense that stocks would be kind of the next step from there, right? You, you, go where the demand is, right? It's a product that people can understand. People know what stocks are. Um, getting them on chain is very convenient for a number of reasons. Um, and I think, you know, where we go from here, I, I don't even think we've scratched the surface yet of how exciting this technology is. And a multi-asset index like this would be so difficult to deploy uh, in, your, in your portfolio and a kind of on traditional rails, but through the tokenization process, you can just get it in a simple, you know, it's one token. Um, and you get this entire basket of multiple asset classes. And I think this is a really interesting uh, and exciting direction that um, we're, we're super thrilled to be part of. Fully agreed. I feel like it's a very good starting point for people to start getting into tokenized assets. It's uh, low risk. It gives you exposure to as many assets as possible through an index. So that seems like the perfect uh, venue to get started here. So tell me a bit more on the S&P um, Dow Jones side. You have built the benchmark for data uh, in the traditional world, right? How do you see tokenization playing the role in the way your company operates in the future? And how do you see on-chain kind of uh, taking more and more of an important role within these operations? Yeah, thanks, Johan. So 
you know, as, as I kind of alluded to before, um, you know, indexes are like a critical part of like, you know, say the plumbing behind the financial ecosystem and capital markets. Um, you know, there's a number of use cases, right? They define the investable opportunity set for investors, use them as benchmarks for funds. Um, and, you know, in the last couple decades, they've become a key part of um, the trading ecosystem as well. Um, you know, some of the numbers are mind boggling. Like there's, you know, close to, or over $250 trillion um, in notional traded on S&P Dow Jones indices per year. Um, so they're, you know, a critical part of the ecosystem. And as, you know, as the financial system moves on chain, you know, people need, you know, trusted data, um, you know, and these indexes need to be there to support um, you know, all areas of capital markets and, and asset management. How do you see Ginari enabling this uh, future wave for tokenization right now? Well, so we, we've, our platform is designed precisely for this, right? So it's, it's scalable, it's generalizable across uh, different types of securities and financial instruments. Uh, we have built, we, what we've tried to build is a very strong foundation of, again, I, I mentioned this earlier, but shareholder rights. So, you know, what does that token mean is, is one of, in my view, one of the most critical questions that you can ask yourself. And, you know, being able to have benefits like cash dividends and, you know, the ability to sell at market value at any time. Um, these are kind of important foundational elements that you can start to build off of across financial in instruments. Uh, and so with that platform, then we can, you know, we can work with index providers, we can work with asset managers, uh, we can work with, uh, you know, single uh, ticker uh, issuers as well. And then, of course, on the other side of that, uh, you know, we can partner with uh, regulated institutions like neobanks, brokerages, fintech applications, as well as, you know, Web3 native protocols and applications to, you know, kind of create this gateway between the traditional markets and, and the on-chain market. Uh, so that's, that's kind of where we see ourselves, is that the, as this you know, gateway provider that's, that's built, built a foundation for tokenization and scaling that you know, we think is very powerful. Perfect, that makes a ton of sense. From our side, our main goal has been being able to provide the tooling, the connections, to make this tokenization effort happen. I'd be keen to understand from your point of view, how important is on-chain data for tokenization to actually take place in the future? Yeah, sure, I can, I can take that one. Um, so, I mean, at S&P, you know, data is our, is our business as well, right? So, I mean, data accuracy, quality is critical. Um, you know, even in the traditional space, you can't, you know, you, you don't have good analytics, you can't make decisions if you have, you know, faulty or bad data. Now, of course, going on chain, it's, you know, at least as important you know, so we, you know, at S&P, you know, we want to partner with like leading firms and we can ensure that our data is accurately reflected and can be verified on chain. So happy to work with, you know, with both Chainlink and Denari to, you know, to make that happen. Perfect, it makes a ton of sense. I think one of the key things on chain is that unlike off chain, on chain is deterministic. If you have the wrong data input on chain, <laughs> you have the wrong output and you cannot revert, you can't go back in time. Blockchains are deterministic, you can't change the outcome of an operation. So that's why I'm so glad we're working with the best to be able to ensure the data we bring on chain is actually reliable and can be the backbone for the future tokenized world we're heading into. So from Dinari's perspective, I would be keen, and Anna, you've, we've been working together for a long time, even before you were at Dinari. What's your perspective on Chainlink? How does Chainlink enable you to get tokenization going and become a gateway for tokenization? Yeah, so, you know, we, you know, obviously we talked about, you know, this index data, and I think, you know, this is a good example of, of how these things start is, um, or uh, maybe a good use case example, but, you know, again, to Mike's point, you have to have accurate and reliable data. You have to have, there's still trust, right? You know, we, we, we all talk about trust minimization, but you have to, you have to be able to rely on something. Um, and, you know, to that point, if you, know, you want to bring capital markets on chain at scale, you need to have infrastructure that can support that. So things like scalability, reliability, and then of course accuracy um, are absolutely vital to that effort. So we're really excited to be working with you guys. I think you know, this is, this is, we're still at the very beginning of, of bringing capital markets on chain. This is a, you know, we've come a long way. Obviously we've known each other for a long time, Johan, but um, 
you know, we're still, at, and it's a very nascent space, right? And so, you know, having this foundational infrastructure is so important. Uh, we're really excited to be working with you on it. Likewise, likewise. So let me ask you, we've been talking about tokenization for seven years, eight years. It's been a dream for a very long time. It seems like we're finally going there. When do you think tokenization will actually not be a project anymore, not be something we talk about, but be the new reality, the new standards, the new infrastructure on which the whole world is running? What will be the key things we see that are the start of this reality? And that's a question for both of you. Feel free to go whichever order. Um, sure, I can start. Um, I don't think I'm smart enough to predict when it will happen, <laughs> although I'm starting to think it may be sooner than a lot of people think. Um, but maybe, I mean, I think maybe there's a couple things that I think will be, you know, really critical to, to bring this to fruition. Um, and maybe the first, maybe some of these are kind of obvious, but the, f the first would be, you know, regulation, making, you know, progress there. Um, you know, without, like, clarity around regulation, it's very difficult to get, like, institutional adoption and, and, and really get to where we need to be. And then the other piece of that would be, which is probably even more challenging, is kind of some global alignment in regulations to, um, to, to really, you know, capture the, the full value. And then the other piece would be like the infrastructure, I don't know if it's really the, like the infrastructure behind things so that we can create products that like truly have like all the values that tokenization can provide. Like we're not quite there um, at, the, at this point, unfortunately, but I think we're getting closer to that. Um, and, you know, like I said in the beginning, I think it definitely has the possibility to be sooner than a lot of people think. Yeah, no clarity helps um, in terms of in terms of regula regulatory clarity. I mean, I think we've we've seen this space take off in a really big way this year. Um, that I I think probably took a lot of people by surprise, and I think that was it was enabled in part by institutions feeling comfortable that they could actually start to move in this area without you know uh, without regulatory blowback, if you will. Um, but you know, I think one of the things that we spend a lot of time thinking about is how. It, how do you enable this transitional phase, right? Um, you know, I, I agree. I think it's sooner than we think that we, you know, that this is sort of running in the background in a way that is uh, is really significant. But there's this interim phase, right, where we're bringing this liquidity on chain, and and you know, one of the things that we focused a lot on is how do we how do we connect again these you know the traditional capital markets with on chain um, activity and use cases and utility in a way that it, we're maintaining price parity between traditional and on-chain markets. We're maintaining uh, you know, the same types of uh, investor protections, shareholder rights that you have so that that liquidity can start to seep uh, you know, slowly maybe at first, but then faster and faster over time. Um, and I think, I think that's taken off a lot in a really exciting way. And we're very excited to see the next, you know, how the next couple of years grow. Yeah, uh, I fully agree. I actually think the product that's being launched here is part of this transition phase. That's exactly yeah. the type of onboarding mechanism we need yeah. to actually make tokenization from a dream and idea to a reality. Yeah. So again, that's yeah. uh, another very exciting thing. We're glad we're collaborating on together. Yeah, so well, it's the kind of product that's, that's t in today's market, it's difficult to, it's, it would be difficult or impossible, right, to launch an ETF that tracks a uh, multi-asset with, you know, 15 cryptocurrencies, equities, but the tokenization wrapper, I think, allows it, it's not easy to do, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it, it makes it like a, a real use case and, and feasible to, to, to bring to market. Yeah, I think the other point is it's uh, zero to one, right? So the yeah. first one is the uh, hardest, and when, uh, when you <laughs> want to scale, then it gets uh, easier and easier. So. Yeah, there's a lot of exciting multi-asset uh, concepts, I think, that are cooking. Um, I certainly am happy to talk about it all day long. We could talk about it all day long, for sure. Like, so let me ask you, any last um, thoughts? I mean, I think we're running out of time. Is there anything else you would like to leave the audience with? Want to start? Um, <laughs> I, like I said, I think we're just at the beginning of this. It's a really exciting space. It's cool, you know, it's cool to see so many people asking questions about it, you know, coming to talks about it. Uh, we, we love talking about it, but, uh, you know, we'd love for you to follow along with what we're doing. Uh, always love to connect with others in the industry who are, who are working on this problem or thinking about it, or um, I'll let you go because we're almost out of time. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I completely agree with, with that. I mean, there's so much innovation. I mean, you can see it. I'm relatively new to the space as well, kind of this year. So um, you can see that there's just a ton of innovation, a lot of really smart people solving, you know, incredible problems in this, um, in this industry. So it's exciting to be, you know, part of it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think this is actually a perfect panel to have towards the end of the conference. It summarizes perfectly what we're doing here. Convergence of ThreadFi and on-chain. And Chainlink is happy to be playing the connector between the two, and I couldn't be happier to be working with both of you. So thank you very much, and uh, yeah, thank, thank you. you, everyone. Thanks, yeah. Thank you. Thanks.